I have a poll going right now for the topic, and I need to at least 100 votes for me to just go through with this, because if I get 100 votes, it means 100 people really wanted this, and that way we can dedicate the amount of time it's going to, you know, to organize this and actually get it done. So I have a poll going on what the next theme should be. It's between creature design, costume design, or landscapes. I have resources set up for all three. Um, and uh, I know some people really wanted these two, but the one that's winning is creature design. It's really good because it's refreshing. It's something new that we've never done. Um, but I need at least 100 votes for me to dedicate the time it's going to you know, take to, to edit all of them, uh, to, to prepare all of the resources for you guys to post them, to keep updated, to dedicate the whole two days of the week um, that we have to the critiques, to critique at least an hour and a half. All of that goes into, um, now I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Um, but, but, uh, but yeah, I really need you guys to make votes. Whoever is voting for this, you have to show up the day I do this because you can't just vote and not show up. Um, so the votes really represent, you know, how many people really want to see this happen and people who are going to be submitting their stuff. So where you submit your stuff for those two weeks, actually for those two days, is right here in the Google community. This is the heart and soul of our community. This is where we all stay connected, stay in conversation. This is where I pick my stuff to edit. Um, so I really request that you guys make a um, decision here if, you, if you're interested in these three um, so that we can... Um, so that we can prepare a day for this. Um, what I will be doing for creature design. So creature design is winning, um, but this is gaining on it, so I'm not sure. Um, you just have to vote for which one you like. I'm not asking you guys to vote for any specific one. Vote for the one that you like. The, the, the votes will be ended. I'll stop the poll around Saturday or Sunday at the end of this week. Or maybe give it another couple days. But we will be doing this for the last week of March, for the 31st or this week of March for the 5th and the 7th and what I'm going to do is give you enough time to create the creature. I'm going to be adding to the resource folder so this is how it's going to get set up. This is either this is the same thing for landscapes or character design alright so it's going to be like I'll explain it in a second. Um, what I'm going to be giving you are the core I'm going to be giving you the core references. The core references are photos I chose that I want you to put together to create a creature and then you have to choose a habitat for the creature. I'm going to be adding more files to this. Either, either a desert terrain or a sky terrain. These are just um, uh, reference photos I found on Google Images and some stuff that I already had saved. Alright, so the habitat reflects the way you design the creature. Alright, this is pure creature design. This is like a, designing a creature for some sort of concept for a movie of, a, of an alien world or a future world or a past world. Um, just to, like a different world of creatures um, and I want you to combine all of the core reference uh, photographs that I've chosen for you. I'm going to be adding more to this. I'm not going to make it too big but when you submit your stuff please make sure this is the resource fol folder that you work with. I'll be submitting it soon as soon as the polls are finished. And if it was costume design that one, I still haven't put together, the co have it saved, I have a couple of costumes chosen. Um, but for the costume design, exactly the same thing, habitat, choose the habitat that that character is from, and then put together uh, reference images that combine together to create that costume. Um, and then in, in turn create that character, all right, and their job. So the habitat reflects their job. I might have a subfolder for habitat and then within the habitat a job or an occupation that they'll be in charge of. This kind of study um, just dresses and, and, and decorates your portfolio. It's really good for it and I felt like it's time for us to do this for our theme weeks. It's really nice because there's quite a wait between now and the week that we're going to be doing it. I think I'm going to be doing it for the 5th and the 7th. I'll, I'll do more um, more announcements regarding that. But if you are voting for any of these, you got to show up on those days. Clear up your schedule, you got to show up because I'm putting a lot of my time into these to set them up, to, to mark them, not mark them, but uh, to go over them for you guys. I'm going to try to go over through everyone's um, issues with form, sculpting, design, function, um, all of that stuff is going to go into it. And talking about um, basic skeletal structure, a lot of anatomy is going to go into character design. Uh, but you never know, it could be costume design by the time this week is over. Uh, so please remember, if you're dedica if, I, if I dedicate your time, you dedicate your time. If you dedicate your time, I'll dedicate my time. Just meet me halfway and show up on those days, okay guys? I need an okay. <clears throat> yes, I picture a lot of kimonos wrapped in trees with eyes staring back. 
No creatures in costume painting a landscape. <laughs> I only came now. What is she talking about? Poles and stuff. Um, a dragon going to go doing a Bob Ross style tree or just a guys focus here. Creature design is winning eight at the moment in the polls. Yeah, Supergirl. There is a poll community website for the next theme, and um, now she's explaining each. Yeah. Let me see what people said ahead of this. So I got the okays, good. Um, just voted. Watched so many of that from Feng Zhu. Costume design, costume design, costume design. <laughs> I want landscapes. Maybe another video if it doesn't win. Um, I'll be I'll be doing those. I'll get rid of um, c creature design once we finish with that, and I'll put landscapes and costume design in another option for the next week, and whatever wins, wins. Okay. Um, I uh, love custom design. I'm going to be doing the homework with you guys, by the way. So I'm not just going to be assigning these. I'm going to be doing a couple of my own using the exact same uh, resource folders. I've been thinking about this for a while. I feel like, you know, it's time to just get out of our winter laziness and just really dress up our portfolio this summer. I'm the person who votes and doesn't show up. <laughs> um find costumes really boring. Uh, I think Free for Fire people just haven't been introducing it to you uh, well enough. I think costumes are super fun. I personally hate drawing them, but I hate, but I love designing them. I love putting them together, but I, I don't like rendering them. If they're just boring, you know, I'm a portrait artist, so I, I by, by, by trade, design the costume is a pain in the dick. <clears throat> um, my YouTube is full of errors lately, so suddenly the video stopped working and I got disconnected. Um, but please don't forget to vote on the Google community. Please make a vote. And remember, if you're voting, show up. I really want to see you guys show up there. You know, you know, give in your time and I'll give in my time. We'll see that viewer count go up and really see that our community is growing and growing solid. Solid. Um, <laughs> I just went full Satan just now. Um, so I'm going to keep dressing these beautiful folders up with all these references. It's going to be so much fun, and I can't wait to see what you guys make. I am dying to see what you guys put together. It's really amazing how people think and how different the way we think is. And You know, I see horns as going on top of the head, but someone can very well just put the horns somewhere else. You know, shrink them and put them on the back as spikes or some cool shit like that. Like, I can't wait for you guys to do something like that. And you will. All right, so let's talk about a couple of these. I love when you guys try to finish images. I really love that. Just remember that there are there is space for improvement in all of these, and um, it's not a complete taboo to bring in masterpieces. But remember that the masterpiece has been created, you by by you. But it, what its main purpose at that point? Uh, it serves the purpose of revealing your weaknesses, areas that you really, um, it reveals your strengths definitely, but where you fall off and compared to your strengths, everything becomes, uh, it looks a little bit less um, worked on just because you haven't invested enough studies into it. Masterpieces are great for revealing what you need to continue studying. But, you know, if you don't have to finish a masterpiece to realize you need to work on hands a little bit more because you're just going to be hiding them behind a pair of wings or in the grass. For me, when I was a kid, I used to just hide them in a bunch of grass. I would just grass on the feet, grass everywhere, waste grass, grass up here if I don't know how to draw the hair. It was, it was grass everywhere. Grass was your bailout. But, um, yeah, uh, you don't need a, a masterpiece all the time to realize you need a couple of studies here and there. But um, I congratulate you on completing an image like this. It's really good. A couple of things I really like. Let's talk about them. I like the symmetrical design. You know me, I love the symmetry. <clears throat> I love the wash that you've thrown every day. I love the color balance. This is what I want to see for color balance. If you want to bring in a color, it's so easy to just to think about where that color originated. So if you want to bring in a more blue shade, you just have to travel in a very curved way and you're bringing in a color that works from that environment. So now we brought in this color. Let's bring in a red. Go back to the base tone or wherever it came from and bring in a red color, always making sure that we're working in curves, that we're bringing in very, very similar colors together. So this color works in here. The room is so dark, the color, the red would never be able to saturate all the way up here. So some of you bring in a color just like this in this kind of color environment and um, color wash or light environment, which is really wrong. This is the capacity of red in this kind of environment. It's moonlight. So when you think about a wash, it becomes very easy to bring in. Let's say you wanted her hair to be red. Don't just bring in a color, a color layer. 
get a red and then do this. A lot of people do this. It's terrible. You have to match the color in quant in in, um, in the value and in saturation. So not only not only decreasing the value of the color, but decreasing its saturation. That's the only way she can have red hair in this kind of environment. So remember that tiny lesson from right now. It's really, really important to keep your wash just perfect and balanced. If it looks too monotone, dress it up, but remember the colors have to match in value and in color and saturation. Colors have to match in value and in saturation. Um, so go ahead and uh, repeat that for me, please. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, but uh, but yeah, pay attention to class, <laughs> or else Draken will, with one fell swoop, deliver his hand of justice. <clears throat> yeah, you've purposely hid the hands. So I want everyone to to um, repeat what I just said. These streams happen every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube. I usually announce it. All right, so let's get on with the critique. Uh, a couple of weak spots the nose where the camera is beneath her head so what will happen with the nose is that it, we will see more of the nostril right now you're painting a nose that looks like it's a head-on like the, the, the nose is level with our eyes the nose is not level with our eyes we are seeing her face from a lower angle so we will see more of her nostrils it's not really pushing the nose up and out of its its where it hovers it's just seeing more of the nostril the hair here, what happens when we bring in a prop before drawing in the other eye, we bring in something to hide it, even from the get-go, what happens is that prop, this hair, everything starts to avoid it. Everything starts to try to show itself. So you will tilt the nose in a way where it is no longer symmetrical, just so that um, you can show a little bit more of the nose. The best thing to do, if you know you're going to be hiding one feature or another, is to draw all the features ahead of time. Draw them all and then dress it up. That way you know that your nose isn't a little bit too high if they're wearing a half mask. Or if they're wearing an eye patch, you aren't, you aren't disrupting the symmetry of the nose bridge. So look out for that. Okay, so let's just look at the nose before, after. Do you see that slight issue before? The nose was a little bit tilted. And I just tilted it back and hid it under that. And we're just seeing more of the nostril. Another thing that happens is the light source. Where is the light source coming from? Now we cheat a lot and that's okay because the cheating allows us to reveal the character but also set up a really cool mood because we, we're, the, we're the god of the, art, uh, of the image, we're the artist so we get to control what's visible and what's not but we still have to follow some rules. So the light that's revealing her face right now, um, that's normal, the light that's revealing her face should be a little more dim and sort of competing with the light behind her. So what I'm doing right now is I'm remo removing the way the muscles on her neck are visible. They're a little bit bulky and I'm, I'm trying to make the head feel like it's emerging from the shadow. So giving the head a real three-dimensional structure. The head will cast a shadow on the rest of the body and it will be slowly emerging from the shadow and that's just the, like the canopy of the hair on top of the face and this is how sort of really we, we start sculpting and you see I'm very careful with my use of the soft brush I know the quality is really bad um, because I want to slowly emerge the face so before after before after do you see that beautiful change we have an atmosphere now and I want a bit more of a sharp shadow here, kind of revealing where the hit, where the shadow reve relieves the head, I mean relieves the body, <clears throat> so that we can see it's kind of coming from the top down. And after I do that, I can't ignore another major light source in the image. So now I'm not treating this as a head, I'm not treating this as anything, I'm treating it as, as, as a form study in a setting. I'm going to brighten the background just a little bit more because there seems to be a light right behind her. So if I intensify that just enough so that it's like right behind her so she is in a shadow, I can use that light to sort of reveal a little bit more form with the rim of her hair and the sides here. 
so we can have a rim light. And once we set that up, and we've considered this light in its extremity, and when I say consider the light, I just mean raise it up to no man's land. The only time a light, the only time you use this kind of white is in a no man's land situation. You don't, you don't use it anywhere else. There's no such thing as this amount of white on a face, where we aren't luminescent. We're mat, we're mattified, so we can't, and we're very dark, so we can't use this. But in order to consider and give, and give, uh, and give enough, I guess, respect for this light source and consider it in the image, we have to raise it somewhat to no man's land. So I'm going to take this all the way back and erase away what I don't want. That's a common thing that I do. Um, so I just erase away what I don't like, and usually I radiate it. So it's in succession that it slowly reads, or reaches that white color. Just enough that it's bright. Another thing that light does in this kind of silhouette situation is it bleeds. There's like a bloom. Always remember this. This is just, you know, basics. Whenever you do this kind of setup, remember there will be bleed. The camera or and our eyes don't capture light like this unless there's some kind of bleed happening. Okay. Uh, and that, the other thing I would do, because the light is radiated, we can't have this value the same as this value, and this value all the way up here the same as this value. That's not possible. So we have to go back to our darken layer and just darken the top and make it seem like the light is really radiating. Or else it feels like there's a whole moon only behind that window. The only light that should be allowed in this area my bad, that was supposed to be on dark and layer. The only light that should be allowed is the hair, the light on her hair, because there's another light that we've created to cheat so that we can show off the character. A couple of anatomy issues as well. Um, so we've got, let's take a before and after just real quick, just by looking at the light. Before, after. Do you see what happens when we use our soft brush properly? before, after. Everything sort of comes alive. We're starting to behave. The, 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 the objects behave with each other as if they're in the same room. This is very vital. We, we have to remember the head shape itself is a three-dimensional shape. So before it felt a little flat. Beautifully balanced colors. Beautiful composition. I love the head tilt. It's such a cute gesture. Just needed a little bit more drama and a little bit more setup. Again, I just erase away what I don't want. So the anatomy issues are as follows. They can easily be fixed. I don't have access to layers, so it probably will be very um, troublesome for me to get in there. But um, the, the, the elevation of the breasts is, it reaches an actual high point where that sticks out further than the face. So the face is right here, and then the neck, and then the breasts. If the breasts stick out, they have full right to to, to reach the highest point skin is capable of in this light environment. So meaning, the light that you've placed on the nose is perfect. It's perfectly justified to use that in the, in the elevation. So I usually say leave contrast to the top, but you have to think about the head from this, uh, the body from the side. What kind of elevations do we have? Altitudes that can catch that kind of light. So we have stuff like this that is needed to make the breasts really feel like they are elevated and they are reaching a high point. Remember I'm only doing this on the parts that I want and erasing away and the parts that I want are just the elevation. That's the only place that requires this highlight. There's going to be some shadows on either side where the, sh where the sort of the front part of the torso starts. Just like this. So if you don't know how to do something, pick up a reference and have that reference sort of guide you around where the elevations are naturally, no matter what kind of breasts you have or no matter what kind of nose you have, what kind of eyes you have, the elevations are pretty much universal when it comes to the skeletal structure. The skeleton kind of uni unifies the way we all react to light. So the nose is really, you know, it sticks out. The um, the breasts stick out, the shoulders stick out. So the shoulders also need that kind of uh, 
you know, only the top part of the shoulder gets that highlight and the rest just kind of tucks away into the shadow. And then we've got the collarbones which are in elevation need their own kind of like they're, they're not at the same level as the rest of the torso so there has to be a value that can represent that or else it feels really unnatural and very flat and it's a pinup what you've drawn is a pinup so pick up a reference for some good boobs pick up a reference for some more delicate feminine uh, feminine poses I mean you have a really good pose right here but the anatomy has to be spot on with pinups it's just uh, it's like a you know because we don't have the model we're doing the painting that's pretty much where pinups came from it's painting in the model and exactly we want her, we want her to wear it's a reaction to um, you know what photographs did with models that back in the 30s and, and whatever and that's just evolved from there photographing women <clears throat> so pick up a good reference and a good influence for you and and work with that. I'm sorry, if I draw boobs, I'm just going to be sitting here for hours. They're, they are the hardest thing to draw. If you ask me, Srek, what's the hardest thing to draw for you, I will say boobs. They're so, like, they're so multifaceted. <laughs> they're squishy, but they also become very solid with reaction to other objects, so you have to make them feel both squishy and being pushed up. Fucking boobs. <clears throat> all right, so this is not good boobs at all, but it's somewhere it's taken us somewhere. I might have to do that tuck like this. As Draken says, it's not an Ista stream without a set of boobs. <laughs> okay. <sighs> I could just be here for hours. All right, that's it. I'm not doing any more. The next anatomy issue is the torso. It's a little bit long, so if we measure the head sizes, we can probably fit four. A little more than four. Four and a half. It should be four by the time you reach, by the time you reach this line right here, right above the crotch, it should be four full head sizes. Typically. You know, you can get away with it. Even if it's not 100% accurate, you'll get away with it. But you can fit a lot of heads in this top torso right over here. And I'm, I calculated in the, the top of her hair. It's really just the head, which is pretty short. Um, two heads wide, so you have the width fine. Um, two heads horizontally wide. So this whole torso needs to end just about here, and her crotch area should be right about there, looking at where the where the head is. So this would, should this should be the limit where your crotch area is right over here. If that, the body feels extremely long compared to the head, so what we would do is find the limit for the torso, complete the gesture. <clears throat> Choose this as the limit for the crotch area, throw that in there, and then fill in the areas. That's pretty much how I use my shapes. You have to use landmarks, so I use some landmarks for the hip bones, so I know where those areas are. Whoopsie. Oh, it's tilted, whatever. The, the signifier right here for the crotch area, it's huge thunder thighs. And then I know how the belly button contorts after that because it just follows the symmetry line. And then everything just comes in. So the body felt a little bit long. What I would do all together is I would just push this all the way up. This whole setup, I would just push it all the way up. Um, because once you set up sort of the fact that the body is this thin, her shoulders need to be somewhere out here for that body to fully make sense. All right. So I would retrace all of the main um, f the main landmarks of the gesture and the anatomy, and I would try to make it so that the waist doesn't just sit here. The, you know, her crotch area is probably all the way down here. That's way too long compared to the size of the head. You can fit a lot of heads in here. Three, four, yeah, almost five heads. It's too long. 
So we want to show off. This She's wearing something very tight so that she would have way more of a waist showing here. So it would be something a little bit more like this and the waist would be a little bit higher. So it's if you tuck in your elbows into your waist, your elbows pretty much reach where your waist is. like this. Just looking at this reference right over here. Sorry, I'm going to erase away the background so I can see it. Love handles and then love handles down. That's where I would place that crotch area and that's where we would see the thigh gap. It wouldn't be all the way down here. I'm going to leave those lines here for you in case you want them back. Um, actually no. The arms also really, really long, really long arms because that's what happens when you fixed one issue, other issues are revealed. So now that we see how long her torso was, the arms are reacting to that. The way we draw arms is by reference to the landmark of the torso. So what happens is we end up drawing that thing too long because we depend on that one long thing to draw that other thing and so both become long. Sorry, that was a really bad explanation. But before, after. We've identified exactly where the light source is, light source number one, which is allowing a vis the visibility of this room, which is the night nighttime light or the moon or something. And light source number two that the photographer brought in to reveal just some of her face. And we've reacted to that with this feather right here. So separate where your light sources come from, then you'll have more focus. Pick up a good reference to get some general anatomy, like the breasts that I drew really, really, like they're really just bad shadows, but they're very general. Okay? It's really nice when we have that, uh, you don't have to use soft brush when we have that nice uh, response to the light source. It feels like the room is really there, like we're painting like it's a real room. I'll talk about this one in a second. Uh, for this person, I feel like what happens is, these are beautiful. I love these. I would love to see more of these. Um, I like how you're painting them as if they really are in a dark room and there's a, a light source so you're feathering them um, and sort of emerging them from the shadow. That's really important if you're using a black background for your character setups. If you are designing for a game or for a 3D modeler that might come in and use this, just keep it a uh, gray background. But um, if you are just doing it as a showcase in your portfolio, you can leave it black. It's not recommended though to have it as black. Well, you we're losing a lot of form here. It's better to bring in a secondary light source to reveal it, at least in this image. Bring in like a purple light, like an ambient light or a rim light to reveal some of the stuff we lost. But uh, anatomy wise, if we look at the farthest point of her brow bone and we see how far the jawline, the jawline pretty much starts right along the lips, right here where the teeth are. So the teeth of the top part of the head finish up here and the jawline starts over here. The jawline, like if I touch my the bottom of my teeth right now and I touch my forehead, right now my forehead sticks out further than my jawline. Okay, so this is the typical universal face you want. The jawline is below the, the, the forehead. It has to be. Um, it's not an overbite that we're drawing, but it, there's, a, there's an amount of overbite that makes sense, especially when we're biting into, into food. It just makes sense to have an overbite just a little bit. Right now it feels like you're drawing characters that have a little bit of an underbite where the jaw feels like it's um, moving forward. That's the only thing that I see consistent in a problem throughout all of the paintings. So what you have to do, especially for the female, now you got away with it with the males because male faces are really sculpted. They're very different from female faces. You see male faces have all of these points right here stick out further than the female face. But the female face, there's still a little bit more sticking out. And all we really have to do, it's a very simple fix, is just tuck it back in. Because that way it'll feel more feminine. If there is a feminine that you're drawing, like a female character that you're drawing, they're trying to make feel very feminine, especially because you're writing I am fabulous, um, you gotta shorten the, 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 the chin. You gotta tuck that in there so it makes sense. So the chin feels like from the side would not stick out further than the forehead. It felt like the chin was at least at the level or further than the forehead. Can anyone tell me why that's a problem? So I kind of just explained it now, but I want to see someone else explain it. And you can keep the cheeks up here, no big cute cheeks, that's fine. It's not about the cheekbones, it's about the jawline. All right? So I'll show you before where they were. Before, 
after. Do you see that issue? It made her feel a little masculine, a little bulky. It'll give a general bulkiness to the way you draw girls. And one last little issue. Um, please, please remember, symmetry is consistent through three-quarter view. Three-quarter view is is not tricky at all. The only thing that compresses is the horizontal line um, right here. That This eye is just less fat, less wide than this one. This one is bigger. That's the, just, the, just the rule of thumb. And hide the nose. Um, hide the eye behind the nose if it is an extreme three-quarter view. But these lines right here, these stay the same. These lines right here, this line and this should be perfectly horizontal or there should be a slight curve if there's a perspective happening. All right. So let's look at the before and after. Before, do you see what I mean with that jawline? Very masculine feeling. After, it brought the feminine back in. Just remember, female faces are just the boy before the pu before puberty struck in, <laughs> all right? When guys go through puberty, a lot of stuff changes. Their jaws become humongous. Like, I remember my brothers. Like, suddenly, in two years, they looked like ogres all of a sudden. I'm just like, you're so fucking ugly. <laughs> because they started to look like ogres. I'm like, yeah. especially because they're not halfway through. <laughs> I'm so mean to my brothers. But there's like a halfway point through... Um, you know, before they become handsome, and right before, like right after they turned from boy face to, the, like, you know, that really weird, awkward teenage phase, when everything is just too big or too small in their face, at bone structure, so this is one thing that happened, it was, they just suddenly got these humongous jaws, it was really weird, and then their nose kicked in, and then their jawline kicked in from the side, and then their brow bone kicked in, <clears throat> like, my brother now is very handsome, but compared to before, <laughs> he looked like a, I don't know, they looked ridiculous. All right, so remember that you don't want a half pu like half boy skeletal structure for the girls you draw. You want to go full beauty when you're drawing for games, when you're drawing for for movies. You want to go full beauty. All right, you never want to flake out. You never want to say, "Oh, that's my style," because that's not going to work. Trust me, you're not going to get away with it. They're going to kick you in the ass. Um, so, yeah, don't forget that you can't get away with an anatomical inconsistencies, especially if you're drawing a glamour shot for like a really popular or a really important female character in the game or in the narrative. You can't take shortcuts with her beauty. If you're drawing Galadriel, you go full beauty. You don't bring in a slightly large nose like they did with the movies. No, you go full beauty. She did not impact us the way she should have. The way Tolkien described Galadriel, like she was the goddess of beauty. Like she was immortal beauty. Like as if some sort of, you know, heavenly creature. Or un uncanny beauty, almost scary beauty. That's how beautiful, that's how he described her. But the way they kind of, you know, an actress is limited to her face, but... <clears throat> when you're designing Galadriel like over again, you have to get, go all out. You have to bring in all the rules that you know at your disposal and recreate that same exact beauty. So when you're drawing a character of similar beauty in, in a game setup, like she's a goddess or the queen of the elves, you don't make mistakes like sticking the jaw out just a little bit more because you aren't limited to your actress. You, you, you go right in and you have all the rules yourself. You are the creator of that character. If you're drawing a handsome male like... Uh, Celeborn, her husband, you're going to have to bring in all the, all the stuff that you know. If you're drawing a half-beautiful elf, you can fuck around and make his head a little bit larger, make him, give him some feminine eyes, make him some ha have some crazy br bushy brows. Um, but again, if you are working with like the epic beauty kind of stuff, and usually in games, everyone is a superhero. You know, um, everyone is a superstar. Every um, every superhero in all the Marvel and DC comics, have, all the females have this like absolute beauty to them. So if you're going to be a creator, you're going to work in that industry, you're going to have to learn what it means to create absolute beauty. All right? People complain on my video, on my channels. Um, they say, oh, yeah, you're drawing the same old face over again. I'm like, no, I'm teaching you the universal face. If you want to work with a reference and that person's face is a normal face, they go in and they say, oh, Isterak, you're not teaching us the normal faces. I can't teach you the normal faces. I'm not God. I don't have the presets for, you know, this kind of face and this kind. Of. There's an endless amount of diverse amount of combinations for nose sizes and eye sizes and lip sizes. I am going to teach you the universal one that works well in game development and character design. So those are the ones that I teach. I'm going to keep teaching teaching those. You can break the rules later when you learn them finally. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, so I blame the Jews up in Parliament. <laughs> uh, let's see what everyone's saying. Um, that's been my entire month of March. So I can just figure drawing. It really helps. Um, 
Can we ever ask about questions that aren't totally on topic but still about art? I think so, Jake. I, I, will, I do have a Q&A at the end of the session. So you can save your question and then ask me again, okay? <clears throat> um, the expression on the third one, yeah, it's really, really beautiful. Um, breaks the... Guys, my forehead and my jaw are on the same line. Am I going to die? Again, people's faces are all different from all kinds of creeds, but if you're a guy, typically that should be normal. If you're a girl, your jawline, your chin line should be a little bit less than your forehead. It's just the triangle on the side. That's all it means. Uh, breaks the beauty triangle with ogre. Breaks cuteness triangle. Mm -hmm. A sculpted jaw is male? Yes. It can. You can have a sculpted jaw on a female, but only because there's no fat in that area that it becomes really, really um, obvious. But generally, you aren't supposed to have a jawline that's wider than the head. You're breaking the triangle at that point. And then you're going to have a masculine looking female. So the forehead has to be, like the top right here, has to be the biggest, and then it all leads down to the triangle. Hence the triangle. It's, it's applicable on all angles. <clears throat> What if she's trans? <laughs> um, that's different. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that now. Um, uh, it's okay. <laughs> I don't hate my brothers. I, I just, you know, I, te I tease them. They tease me. We punch each other. Uh, a lot of trans get feminiz feminization surgery to slim jaw and nose. They can do that, Katie, with um, like uh, hormone, hope, hormone supplementation or hormone, I forget the word, but hormone, hormone therapy over a year. You should see some of them. Google Google testosterone uh, trans uh, in a year, and then estrogen trans in a year. You'll be amazed. You think they were born with, in that gender? Um, uh, I said, do you have a female celebrity that is the ideal beauty triangle that we could reference? Yes, I do. Her name is <clears throat> Rachel Vice. All right, she, in her younger years, she was sort of the epitome of beauty for me. Um, but that's, this is pretty much the face you want to work with. In this fat, in this skeletal structure, the triangle, the chin size. The, her, she didn't have like a completely tiny nose. She had a, quite the large nose, but it still fit her face. So her eyes, her bone structure, the arc, the lip width, the lip, the lip height, sort of the, the size of the lips, the cheekbones. Nothing too masculine. Everything leads down back to the triangle very beautifully. No overbite, no underbite, very delicate. You always want a delicate overbite if you've ever seen the, re the recent um, trend in Disney. Um, so, uh, Anna, um, what's it called? Frozen images. So there's a, a recent overbite trend they've been having. And then you've got, because it's cute. <clears throat> and nearly everybody has it. It's just like the normal skeleton, like nondescript skeleton. Um, what is that one character? Tangled. <clears throat> Images. They really had the overbite here. You can tell in the way they talked. It was kind of annoying because it's, it's like every character now that has that overbite. Exact same kind of mouth. <laughs> it's like copy-paste. But that's, that's what I mean by universal beauty. Like, these characters are completely different, but they have the exact same setup. And this is like, I'm talking about the most popular female <laughs> designs now, which is like tangled and, and not really tangled, but more frozen. But it's exactly the same thing. All right, so if you, if you have to create someone that looks a little bit less beautiful, just, just compare to this and don't work in this extreme. Um, Disney eyes are just retarded, retarded large. <laughs> it makes no sense. But they're working off the... the cartoons from old but her face is very beautiful um, you, you really don't need any one person uh, to reference you just need to remember um, the the triangle really it's it's it, you can find it in all kinds of female faces but she's she was a goddess like she is a goddess she, look look at how pretty she was <clears throat> I think she's I think she should have been the most beautiful woman in the world instead of Ashwarya Rai I don't think Ashwari Rai should have, should have earned that title. She's way more beautiful than her. And more natural. Less plastic. Anyways, I'm done with my drama. Um, so yeah. Do you guys see what I'm saying with the before and after? That jawline. You seem to have that same bulkiness through male and female. So keep that, uh, keep that uh, in, in, in mind. When you are doing a laugh, like a laugh... Remember that this part of the lip also stretches out. So the lip, when it's not laughing, is plump. When it laughs, when it smiles, this becomes less wide, less less high. 
So you have to use the same amount of fat stretched over more space. So this means this elevation goes down. So this thins out and this goes up. So we have less of that. Some people really love this Cupid's bow dip, um, but it's not consistent in a smile. In a smile it disappears because it's being stretched, stretched muscle. So when you want to create a laugh that feels natural, as natural as possible, which is something we always want, you tuck this up. There are some people who still have this um, kind of face right here, uh, but again, just work with the work with the general, the norm, like the universal when you're creating for games, when you're creating for your own work. Always remember that you're tucking in the fat, so you get a little bit more of a, especially for male characters, you can get away with a deeper laugh line. Okay, so before, after. Do you see when we pu push it back up, it feels more natural? Here it feels forced, like you're doing this. <laughs> and before, it, it feels like, like I'm doing, like you can tell when I'm laughing because there's more air and more more stuff coming out. <laughs> I when I talk, it, the shape of my mouth is significantly larger when I'm smiling and talking. So you can tell, you can tell just by hearing it that you someone's smiling. Okay, so that's that's pretty much why it happens. Just because the the cavity opens a little bit wider, more sound comes through. It's more of a higher pitch. Uh, for this person, the same stuff. If you do want to make someone look old, like really like lack of life, uh, you want to remove the beauty. If you want to, if you want to make him like the sexy, super awesome, evil guy, keep his skeletal structure a little bit more strong, like he's not frail. But if you really want to push it, you gotta do a little bit more work, and that's thinning out the lips. The most important thing in, in, in removing age or adding age, removing youth, is thinning out the lips. Laugh lines are definitely necessary. He can still be handsome, but right now what I'm doing is working with the skeleton, defining it a little bit more, lowering the brow. Keep that um, arch dark. Don't ever put light under it, because then he'll look like a woman. He'll look like Ursula. With Ursula, they did that. They gave her all of the really, they gave her an ogre face, an elf face on an ogre face, so she, she was even more hateful. <laughs> and then they gave her these crazy brows that were like thin, penciled in. Um, cholo brows. I'm sorry, I'm saying cholo. <laughs> it's just those cholo girls just actually shave their brows and put them back on. Anyways, um, so that's why Ursula was such a successful character design because she she had the beauty, but she also had that that old age, that manly effect. So never put light under here. That's what they did with Ursula. That's how they kind of made her feminine, or else she looked like a man. And just want to bring in the bony as much as possible. You're trying to show off your variety, male, female, and age. So if you can show off where the fat stopped and where the bone kicked in and where this person was lacking in life, that's, that's, that's how you can show variety. Be careful with the thickness of the lips though. The, that is like the number one that reveals, it reveals um, beauty like really quickly. That's why girls get lip liner and overline their lips every time they put on makeup. They want to add like extra volume to their lips. We're trying to make this guy look like an evil, deprived, push this down more, kind of a bad guy. So what we want to do is show off that there is less fat in his, in his body, less life, more sickness. That's really mu pretty much what you're drawing when you're drawing a character that is evil. Um, or you have to, you know, that trope, that very basic bad guy trope. You're trying to show off that he's anemic. You're pretty much, that's what you're showing. Old and anemic. Everyone write that back to me. Old, anemic, and I'm sorry for, I'm not really mocking it, but, um, like, anorexic. Okay, we're trying to show off this laugh line. Even a wrinkle. You can go ahead and make it a wrinkle. But see this deep set right here, this deep, um, kind of bone structure right here. This reveals... Like a lot of the bone structure, so when you're laughing, wrinkles, you're more susceptible to having them wrinkles. And then dropping that shadow all the way down, because that nose, is, it sticks out a lot if we look at it from the side. And then you want to add in those little eye bags. They are actual volumes. They they, they, they stick out. They're, they're an elevation and a depression. 
So it's a hill, a real hill and a valley. And again, this is old age. Now, he still looks like a sexy monster. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm really into bad guys. Um, but, uh, but he's an old sexy evil monster. So don't overdo it with the beauty when you're trying to show off age and evil. Don't bring in more beauty than you have to. Unless, you know, he's like a Gaston. Then, like, from Beauty and the Beast. Or like a like a Ultron. They gave him really, really handsome features. But they also dehumanized him at the same time, so he wasn't relatable. Um, but come on, look at this. Look at this sexy beast. It's just life. See that really strong, really, really healthy bone structure? Perfect symmetry. Brow bone. Head size. Burly. Wide ass jaw. Way wider than the eye size. Lots of ogre in here. But of course he's dehumanized. But he's still very extremely handsome. But they also brought in human with the eyebrows and all that stuff. But uh, you want to you want to get you want to deprave him of beauty. These deep deep um, ch uh, like the cheek, the cheek holes, and the the high the high cheekbone. That's exactly what we're doing between all kinds of. I mean Skeletor <laughs> is. Um, is this a skeleton, right? But this is the extreme. What we want to do is work from this, but also have a little bit of flesh on him. So I don't know what's a really, really good bad guy that uh, this is really cool right here. Completely depraved of life. I like how they did this. Um, but what's another bad guy that that is also like a sorcerer, like a really bad evil guy from movies? Um, we didn't really see Sauron's face. We did see the Nazgul. And the Nazgul are exactly um, on masks. The Nazgul had that exact same, exact high cheekbones, old age, eye sockets, deep set, lack of hair, really old, just old, old and angry, anemic, anemic and uh, and old. <laughs> All right, guys. That's how you create a successfully looking bad guy. You don't give him beauty. Like, look at the ogre here. You don't give them lots of, lots of beauty. He has triangle, but look at that jaw size. That's what brings back the ogre. All right, so. Oops. Before, do you see how he looked a little bit cute? Like, this is before he went bad. Like, before Sauron became Sauron. But after way more pulling out of that skeleton, that anemic but old setup. Alright, so female is female now. Uh, laugh feels a little bit more natural and cheerful. And then just the depraved father they never knew that was a bad guy, kind of like um, that one bad guy with the mask from Star Wars. <laughs> Whose name I can't... Darth Vader. <clears throat> okay, before... After... Pushing it that extra bit um, further. Let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, Jafar. Jafar, yes. Jafar is perfect. Jafar is a perfect example um, of that. That exact same kind of deep set, cheekbones, deprived of life, old and anemic. <clears throat> Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> Jaffa makes me like to think of Jaffa cakes. Lord Voldemort, oh my god, yes. Why am I writing Lord? <clears throat> yep. Really high cheekbones. Lots of, you know, really anemic. Like, what? <laughs> like, what happened? Oh my god. Yes. People are getting it. But yeah. Exactly the same setup with this guy. It's just, it's a trope, you know? There's a, there's the universal epic, and we all pull from that in our own way to make World of Warcraft and Lord of the Rings, but we're all, we still have the bad guy who's a piece of shit, and the good guys who are the beautiful. And that's it. You know, you will f you realize that when you become a character designer, you're going to be seeing that over and over and over and over again. There's no relief. <laughs> and you just have to dress it up and make it new somehow. I'm not sure I have time to look over the rest, but I can look over them really quickly. Um, I, I wrote this up in the, the, the community, um, I wrote a comment or two, um, but I want to show the rest. When you guys have a prop that is this heavy, this look, this heavy looking, almost his whole height actually, 
Um, he has to show off that he, this, if he wants to hurt people, this thing has to be heavy, heavy enough that he had to develop some sort of excessive muscle in order to carry this. So it looks like it weighs like a foam. You know the foam that comes in when you buy like a microwave? It looks like it weighs that much because there's no asymmetry here. Nothing is happening to his body that's helping him carry this thing up. A gesture looks cool, a character design looks cool when you guys have that much anatomy and that much realism invested into the into the nature of that of the animal, into the nature of the of the object. So that when it carries something heavy, its whole body like kind of tilts over and throws all the form over here and then his leg has to keep this up and this leg has to just separate a little bit more to keep balance and this one maybe has to come in and hold it so now he looks like this object really is heavy and he's ready to swing it and rend you to pieces so when we're when we think about I'm just holding my water bottle it's really heavy and that's kind of what clued me in the fact that my my shoulders cannot be symmetrical one of them has to be higher the head might be a little bit tilted the neck would not be visible because my whole trapezius muscles and my laterals and my pectorals are all involved in carrying this humongous object upward my biceps all of these things are going to have to you're going to have <laughs> You're gonna have I'm so sorry. You're gonna have to um you're gonna have to exaggerate these muscles a little bit. So instead of drawing the muscle like this, draw the muscle like that. Um and see what you can do um after that with the with the you know, not just drawing them in but forming them as well. So the shadows become a little bit more sharp instead of soft and tapered. <clears throat> but remember that when you're designing characters, don't just draw a symmetrical character. If you're going to draw him symmetrically and show him off in your portfolio and like have a AAA um, employer take a look at your portfolio, keep the keep the weapon on the side if you don't know how to incorporate it in with the anatomy. If you do know how to incorporate it in with the anatomy, look at a good reference. Like what I recommended is a guy holding a sledgehammer. Holding sledgehammer. <clears throat> um... Actually, this thing isn't that heavy. I'm looking like a uh, holding um, log. Wait, that might be, that might bring up some, <laughs> look at this fabulous beast. Um, anything, anything where it looks like someone's holding something really big. Humans just don't do that, you know? You only find that in animals, so it's hard to find swinging sledgehammer. Um, there we go. This is perfect. So he's swinging it up here. Again, the shoulders aren't visible. Do you guys see that? Um, let me see if I can zoom in. The shoulders aren't visible anymore because this entire muscle group is involved in carrying up. His, his legs are separated from each other because he needs that balance. So when you're drawing a character that's doing that exactly, that's what you're pulling from. These kinds of references. He's not just going to come in, you know, holding it like that. It doesn't make sense. And plus, it's more relatable if you bring in that kind of weakness to him. Then he feels like a defeatable boss. If he goes around swinging one-ton weapons and he's like this humongous object, uh, he's not going to feel natural. He's going to feel like an undefeatable god kind of thing. It comes down like, uh, like, the, like those weird mages that have floating staffs that they don't have to hold. You know, at that point, we're using magic as an excuse in the character design, and we're avoiding anatomy. So just think about that. All right. Um, what was this one? Okay. Uh, this I have to like, save for another day because it's a full three-quarter view, and that's just a whole other ball game. This one is a full three-quarter view, sort of. Um, but this kind of helps fix the other one because sometimes when you're seeing a lot of the side of the nose, the other eye is almost completely hidden. What you did, the person who was before this guy, um, was you showed a lot of the eye. This is wrong. You have to hide the eye. You have an issue with compression and the nose a little was a little bit large. And this eyebrow feels a little bit stretched. So, actually the eye kind of has a proper placement. I just feel like it could be a little bit closer and a little bit more symmetrical like this. And the brow bone could be a little bit closer this way. <clears throat> so I'm just going to fix that. Oops. Just like that and show you the before. The eye felt a little distant. Maybe with your, with your reference you didn't look at it. Um, but the the brow felt like it was hovering outside. The brow isn't going to sit on the complete other side of the eye, uh, of the face. The three-quarter views, the quarter that we're seeing more of, 
this one right over here, or just it kind of tapers off really um, softly into the chin. But this right here, the brow usually, like hold your eyebrow, it sits on the temple, but it sits on the edge right here, right under your temple. The whole brow doesn't just, you know, sit around here. It doesn't do that. The peak of your brow is the end of the front, front part of the cube. Right, so this is the cube. The peak of your eyebrow sits at that edge. Oops. Right here. All right, let's just remember that. And that's it. Um, cancel, save. Lots of stuff today. Lots and lots of stuff. Stuff I repeat constantly, but it's like the lesson is new again because we see another person make that mistake and we learn from what they're doing. So it's really cool seeing the variety of art that you guys are capable of. I love that. I can't wait to see that applied to the to the concept art for the for the creature design. I can't wait to see what you guys do. But let me let me look at the let me look at the poll right now and re relink you guys the poll. Seventy four. Um, so fourteen people voted since I started class. Yeah, the ear is very low. The ear is some I didn't even look at the ear. The ear is extremely low. Um, the ear is supposed to sit in between. Whoops, in between. Uh, thank you, Jeffrey. That was awesome. Uh, in between the the eye, the eye line, and the nose, and the nose line. So this line and this line. That's pretty much where ears sit. You can change the size. You can go crazy. Everyone has different genetics, but this is the general location on the universal skeletal structure that we all share. Okay. Maybe a little bit further across. Okay, it needs compression, that's why. A little bit higher as well. Yeah, something something there. Okay. <clears throat> Cancel. Flatten. But yeah, thank you, Jeffrey. I completely missed that. So please don't forget to vote for your topic that you want to see. Um, it will be uh, on the 5th and the 7th or the 29th and the 31st, depending on how much time you guys need to finish the concepts. I probably will finish the poll on the 19th, um, but we'll see. As for Portrait Studio, uh, drum roll please, uh, not really, uh, the Portrait Studio is going to be available by the end of the day or by tomorrow. It's going to be completely available for download. Um, so I'm going to link it. I'm going to announce it. I have a video for it. I have a demo for it, um, like the demo video. Um, I will be assigning homework with Portrait Studio, by the way, for portrait studies. For those who don't really have a reference who want to try dynamic lighting, I'll be, make, I'll be generating the reference and posting them on the community for you guys to use. I have another concern I wanted to express to you guys. I'm scared of us hitting like a thousand... Or 1500 members because it's gonna get crowded in here and I'm not sure how we're gonna put a cap on the members <laughs> I'm really scared of, of losing control I'm scared of people multi posting so to keep this fair to keep this wall accessible to everyone especially those who critique um, daily for those who help Jeffrey myself um, Drake and others who critique many many people critique um, it'll be overwhelming for them if you guys post more than one image a day so you are limited to one in 24 hours if you're doing a 14 day challenge only one in 24 hours please don't over post because this is getting really crowded and it's starting to get scary um, and I love I love you guys I welcome every single one of you just remember just be fair um, and post if you have sketches don't do like multiple posts for sketches put it all in one post and uh, so that people can see it remember one post if I, if you do post more than one in 24 hours I will delete one of them all right and I hate to delete them after someone's already given you a critique and spent their time giving you a critique it's not fair to, to delete their you know their work um, and their critique but please just avoid that entirely and post only once all right, thanks everyone for coming today. Have a great day. Good luck with all your homework. Bye-bye.